Hello my little beauties, now let me just start the clock here, there's a reason why I'm doing this and it's because I have a news flash. Turns out, you don't need third party libraries like Bootstrap uh, with all of its rows and calls shenanigans uh, to handle advanced CSS layouts. I mean, I know that a lot of you folks are using things like this, this is Tailwind. Tailwind has a whole bunch of bullshit to do with handling grids. So, what I'm telling you is it turns out you don't need any of this stuff for doing advanced layouts. I've been using Blueprint, by the way, which is probably the best of the bunch. But again, it turns out that you don't need any of that stuff. And I'm going to prove it right here. Because I'm going to show you how to do an advanced, do you hear me? An advanced layout like this one here. I call this the Holy Grail layout. It's this one here. And I'm going to show you if I can grab the end. Keep an eye on the cells. Look at this. See all resizes? Look at the resizing. Now watch the sidebar. Look at this. It disappears. Okay? This is what I call the Holy Grail layout. This is an advanced layout, folks. And I'm going to show you how to do that in under 10 minutes. And I've already wasted about a minute and a half, so I suppose I'd better get started. So let's uh, clear the decks here. And I'm using Emmet, by the way. So I've got a blank page. And to kick this one off, I'm just going to do a little exclamation mark and a tab. And then I'm going to map out those four areas. We've got a header. We've got a sidebar. For some reason, my autocomplete won't handle that. Then we've got a main area. And then we have a footer. Now, if those tags are a little bit strange, then maybe you should join Speed Coding Academy. Because I teach all of that stuff and it's covered in one of the lessons, speedcodingacademy.com where we code as fast as you like and teach how to build any app any client could reasonably ask for. Anyway, I don't know why I say we, it's me. But let's move on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of styling here. Well, of course I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it right on the page. We're going to say that the body has got a margin of zero. We're going to color in each of these different areas here. So I'm going to say that the header has a background color of pink, just so that I can see it, right? The sidebar has a background color of cyan. The main area is going to have a background color that's yellow. And the footer is going to have a background color that is purple. Okay, so if we check it out, that's what we've got. Now, how's the clock looking? Ah, it's plenty of time. So, what we're going to do to kick this one off is we'll define the heights for the header and the footer. They're both going to have a height of 10% of the viewport height. Okay, so if we just refresh, there we go. Now, I'm going to go into... Uh, probably just below this header, and we'll have a div with a class of a wrapper. I'm going to copy the sidebar in the main area and paste in there. Maybe even a little bit of indentation here to make us all feel smug, you know? So let's define wrapper as having a display type of grid, and I'm going to say grid template columns is 1fr, 4fr, and minimum height is going to be 80% of the viewport height, okay? So there we go, things are looking good. Now, for the main area here, I'm going to do 15 little divs. I want you to imagine that these are all items in a shop. I'll just write the word item in here, okay? And we're going to say that if we have our main area, and if there's a direct descendant div, let's give them a background color of silver. So we get something like that. Now, I'll add a little bit of padding onto the main area here. So padding of 1M. And now I'm going to 
do the magical but part even. I'm going to say <laughs> grid. Uh, actually, display is grid. I'm going to say grid, template columns, repeat. Now, here is where the magic comes in. Because if we take a look at Amazon here, and I'm just going to right click and inspect. When I do this, I can see that these items here have all got a width, or the divs rather, they all have a width of around about 270 pixels, right? So what I'm going to do is a little trick. I'm going to say auto hyphen fit, then a comma. Then I'm going to say min max. And in parenthesis, I'm going to say 270 pixels, comma 1FR. Then I'm going to say grid gap 1M. Now, before I refresh that, what I'm saying here is I want each of the cells to be a minimum of 200 pixels. And if you cannot fit that in, just make it full width. And this little auto fit, wait till you see what that does. I'm going to refresh, or save rather, and refresh. And look at this. See? See? Isn't that fantastic? Now, we can enforce a little bit of height if you want by saying grid auto rows, maybe 200 pixels. That looks pretty good. And the last thing I'm going to do is just focus on this sidebar here. I don't want it to be too narrow, okay? So let's say for the sidebar, minimum width actually is going to be about 300 pixels. And what that means is that we're always going to have a decent size on the sidebar here, right? But when we get like too narrow, I want that sidebar to disappear. So what I'm going to do there, in fact, I'll show you how much time have I got here? I think I've got time. So the way that I would actually get the number is I would open up the inspector here like this and I would look at the top right hand side. See as we bring that in, can you see how there's a number there showing as the pixels? So I'm keeping an eye on that top right hand side and I want it to disappear probably about there, about the 700 mark, right? So I'm going to do a little media query, so it's at media, it's like that, and I'm going to say max width 700 pixels, and when that happens, I want to say sidebar has a display type of none, and the wrapper is going to go to grid template columns 1FR. Save it, and refresh. And there you have it. So look at this. See, everything is fantastic. And watch the sidebar disappear. And there it goes. All right. Now, how am I doing for time? Oh, cool. I have hundreds of time to spare. What shall we do? Shall I talk you into the benefits of joining Speed Coding Academy, where you learn how to build any app that any client could reasonably ask for? You know, Speed Coding Academy? No. Okay. Well, let me just read some Macbeth then. Since I've finished so early. Since it was so easy. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets its hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. I actually remember this, by the way. I got a degree in English literature. This is the kind of thing you pick up, you know. I knew that degree would come in useful. Okay, life is but a walk of shadow. Uh, what is it again? A poor player that struts and frets its hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. I can't believe that I remember this. "'Tis a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you later.